Welcome to another episode of Fill in the Blank Podcast. I'm joined with Evan Ewing. So what's up, Evan? This is the only podcast that injects themselves with CIA grade truth serum before we even begin. What? (laughs) We're given the facts, so I guess that's what you're hinting at? Only the truth. Only the truth. Well, the truth will be revealed. We're talking about the biomedical tissue services. What comes to your mind when I say biomedical tissue services? Um, probably like stem cell like, research, like skin grafting, that kind of thing. You yeah, know, like kind of helping burn victims. Yeah. Um, like maybe experimenting with um, ways to kind of heal someone's tissues or regenerate type of skin. Sounds like a good program, yeah. especially if you know you're a firefighter. You lose some of your skin or something in a fire. You're able to get it not graft from your ass, but able to kind of fix it and heal it in a way i know one of the firefighters uh yesterday in the uh this might be dating the podcast but yesterday is the notre dame uh, cathedral fire i know one of the firemen was badly injured so may- maybe some to help that poor guy out you know more facts will be loaded up on that and we might end up doing out of or fill in the blank on that one well the biomedical tissue services known as the bts was a Fort Lee, New Jersey human tissue recovery firm that was shut down by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, on October 8, 2005. Now, why would they do that, Robbie? Well, after its president, Dr. Michael Mastromirano, and two other employees were convicted of illegally harvesting human bones, organs, tissues, and other cadaver parts from individuals awaiting cremation, for foraging numerous consent forms, and for selling the illegally obtained body parts to medical companies without consent of their families. It's always something. It's always a shit. That did not seem like the good group of people we made them out to be in the beginning of the <sighs> podcast. Man, it could have been. You know, it's crazy because you ever what's going on right now in our times is um, the idea for late, uh, late trimester abortion. Um, basically, in an interview, this guy said, like, once the baby's alive, they tell the mother that the baby died. Like, the baby's dead. Your baby has a heart tumor, has a heart murmur. You know, it's, it's not going when it, to, when it comes out, it's not viable. You know, this baby comes out, the mom's like, let me see my baby. Like, your baby is dead, sorry. And they put the baby away before the mom can get her hands on it. And then that baby's got a good two weeks or something, could have a good two weeks left, a nice seven pound baby. And they go and study it, research it, all these vans and stuff come in. And then when people do late trimester abortion, like the baby's already produced, it's only got like a week or two left. What happens is they cut it out and they send it away. When the baby's like, oh, it's going to die, you know, cut it out, send it away. Dude, my socks are like across the fucking room. My wig is blown off. What are you talking about? This what? is happening right now with the late, the, 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 the act that just got passed. The bill that just got passed on late trimester abortion. So you can have a baby. And when this baby is born, like it, it, when you're in your last like month, last couple weeks, you can decide to get an abortion. That's not right. The baby has a heartbeat. And that is, that's pretty scary. It should be a viable human, but what happens is it can't survive. So what happens is when they take it out, they sell the, the, the like they use it for research. They test on it. They do all this types of weird stuff to it. Sometimes the nurse will actually, it, it got one of the hospitals in, um, I think it was Arizona or somewhere weird was taking the babies and all these babies were going missing from the doctor's rooms. All these babies couldn't have died. But the nurse was stealing them, and they were sending them in these vans. Helicopters were coming in, black vans were coming in and taking these babies and taking them to research facilities. And they were getting paid so much money because they would get like $5 million for, you know, a a a seven-pound baby. Jesus. You know, listeners, we will not posit an opinion on this issue. Lots of feelings running very high, you know. Let's just all agree to love each other. Sadly, that's not what the world comes to. We're dealing with on... It's it's such a gray area. Lots of religious beliefs, you know. This is happening in 2005. You don't even want to know what we're probably doing in 2019. Well, let's talk about the human skin aspect of stuff, taking all this. In the U.S. alone, the human skin has the largest market and supplier with 2 million products derived from human tissue are sold each year, doubling over the decade. So since 2005, that number has doubled. 
So the case of the dead benefiting the life of the living towards research and understanding. That's how they explain this. The dead are giving us information that we need to survive and get more about our bodies. Now it's okay if a, a certain person we get consent from to test their loved one's body part or something like let's see you know can we use your 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 son's heart to save this other person dude since organ donors you. save lives yes man. it might it might be but your might organs, be scary you might be it might be weird to think about your body being like taken apart you know your after you die but are not only sometimes uh, going to somebody else they're sometimes taken to the government and they're sold somewhere else on a black market you ever hear about like if a person has no relatives or no family alive and they get into like let's say a motorcycle it's common with motorcycle accidents that person gets in a her terrible car wreck turns into a vegetable they have no one to decide their fate for no will or anything they just decide pull the plug kill you take your organs even though you could have a chance of survival even though you could just be in a coma we don't know when you're going to wake up but it's better just to get rid of you now and then use your organs to benefit something else in the long run <sighs> what's your idea behind that it's scary it's there's a lot of issues in the way the machine we live in runs, but lots of benefits, too. Well, there's been cases where family members have been having a child or something missing for a long amount of time because they went on a trip somewhere and no one knew where they were going. You know, they're adult. They grow up. They go out and take random trips sometimes. They go and experience the world, go ride a motorcycle somewhere. You haven't seen your son in four years. You haven't heard from them, haven't known anything about them. Next thing you know, you see there's just, you know, it's, it, it's just some government thing that's gone on that they killed your son off because he was in an area where no one knew him. No one knew how to thing him. Everybody told me the government said they were dead or the doctor said he was dead. And um, they took all his organs off and, and you never know what happened to your kid. That's a scary thought, man. But that's something the real world has, obviously, something like that has happened, man. Like, obviously, man. The real world is a scary, scary place. Lots of disgusting, horrible shit. Body not, not even malicious shit. Just horrible accidents. Body snatching has been happening through history, man. It happened with, like, 19th century, the Burke and Hare murders. Like, when we talk about Robert um, yeah. Lister and all those, like, his whole, his whole, um, what do you got that guy robert knox like when he exposed him for working on a yeah. dead woman's corpse that was just became dead carried the woman out himself <laughs> yeah like the whole lot yeah good job but it's like that whole um aspect of it like body snatching has happened like it's people sell organs like black markets you can find some crazy stuff on the black market people sell eyes you know you talk about waking up in a bathtub filled with ice with your kidneys taken out like people want that stuff People pay a certain amount for things. Well, let's talk about the history of this. In the late 2005, the New York City Police Department investigated Michael Mastro Marino and his company BTS for allegedly selling stolen human body parts. The probe was first reported by the New York Daily News in October 2005 and led to a number of exhumations, including one of Queen's New York woman who had been who had many of her bones removed and placed with PVC piping, which is a typical industry practice for cosmetic reconstruction of tissue donors. According to government witnesses, BTS sought business relationships with a number of funeral homes in New York and Pennsylvania, solely to obtain access to recently deceased people, often paying the funeral homes 1000 or more per corpse. So a lot of times, hospitals were getting trouble for selling dead people's bodies to these types of individuals or companies that were taking the organs and selling it somewhere else. So they would also go to funeral homes, and a lot of times you're... Um, there's actually been a couple cases in recent news, too. It's happened a lot, like in 2000 and up to the year we are now. Um, people, like, their family's body wasn't in the coffin. It was just a closed coffin. Like say you know you got into an accident or something, closed coffin. It's not going to be a good site. Can't re piece the body together. You can't do all those disembowelment type stuff. But you know when they suck all the organs out, you know sometimes they might use some of that depending on how viable the person is when they die. Like they yeah. just do that when the person dies. And to think, there's been a couple times people have opened up their casket for their loved one and it's another body in there. It's not that. It's like, this isn't my uncle. This isn't my grandfather. Where's my grandfather? You lost my grandfather. 
it's, it's, it's such a shame. Imagine you lose something, you're going through a traumatic situation, and you open up your casket, or open up one of your family members' casket to kiss your mom on the forehead. God forbid, but kiss your mom on the forehead, and it's not your mom, it's a Chinese woman. That's Miss Yang from the laundromat downstairs. It's, I've personally experienced, you know, like, it's dealing with funerary, you know, How could you be arrangements. It's, it's, it's really delicate. It's I, a tense moment. My, one of my friends is cremated. I, I still have, tr like, I have trouble because I don't have, like, a grave to go see, you know? And, like, I can't even think of if I did have, like, some sort of casket to open and, like, it wasn't fucking him. Like, uh, 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 like, yeah. That shit can get intense and you rough. Answers. People get... It's... Yeah, it sucks. Well, let's talk about... Um, so, they're using PVC piping and all this stuff that, you know, creating business relationships with funerals for... Uh, for $1,000 or more per corpse. So in nearly every case, BTS employees obtained human allograft tissue, bones, ligaments, and other cadaver material from four Ching family members. So they did get some consent in other doctor forms without actual authorized consent. So they never got the person's word. They more like got doctor's words. Yeah. Often against the written wishes of the family. So some of the families are like, I do not want him to be an organ donor. I just want him buried in the ground. I want everything intact with him. It's his stuff. Keep him. So people would go against that. BTS employees engaged in highly irregular and unsafe practices such as allowing cadavers to deteriorate before collecting tissue and parts, not testing donor material for diseases such as HIV and AIDS, and even accepting cancerous and other disease cadavers for harvesting and selling. Under federal regulatory guidelines for the proper care and management of donated human tissue, firms are required to screen and test donors for relevant communicable disease agents and diseases that ensure HCTPs are processed in a way that prevents communicable disease contamination and cross contamination. So when you get an organ transplant, let's say you got a, you want a new kidney. Yeah. Well, this guy just died um, from like a, a really bad sickness. We need to make sure that his organ, like he didn't die from a sexually transmitted disease. If he yeah. died of AIDS, if he died of something like that, we can't give Entire you Entire body is unusable. Because what's going to happen is that organ's going to go into you later down the road. You're going to start feeling what he was feeling. And you're going to end up dying from the same exact thing because now your body is infected with an infected organ. It's now going to infect the other ones. So that's when, you know, the, the guidelines for, like, federal regulatory guidelines came out for the proper care and management of this tissues. That's a smart act to definitely have because you got to watch that. It's got to be very careful. You don't want to save a little girl's life and next thing you know you gave her some guy that has syphilis his heart. You know, because, and this is not to disincentivize or disconcert people from becoming an official organ donor. You can, you can save countless lives by just... Having one little check mark on your driver's license, you know? Do you want to guess the average cost of a human body if it's disease free? I can't even imagine. It's between eighty thousand and two hundred thousand dollars. I can imagine. Yeah. True. Now I I couldn't imagine, now I can. <laughs> would you would you sell a kidney for like five thousand dollars? I would not when I'm using it. Fuck no. <laughs> but what would you when do I'm... if you were in an addict and you were trying to get some money? I think he'd easily go sell his kidney. Sure, you want to take my eye for nine grand? You just get to wear an eye patch and give you a C&I dog or something. Best not to give people that choice. You end up being <laughs> that dude that's like no arms and legs and like no no nothing left, just like a head and a torso, and he's sitting in, like just sitting in a wheelchair. Yeah, but best not give people like a choice between keeping an arm and I got getting a fix. I got grand for my eyes and 20 <laughs> grand for my lips and 50 grand for my ears. Yeah, like Yeah, but you look scary. What? Yeah, pe pe people will take that unfortunately sometimes. Some people just that's why we talk about addiction it just goes down the road. Well, the right to know where the new parts you're getting were from, if they were alive or dead. Sometimes some hospitals are actually accused of putting a dead organ in somebody's body. So like we all, we know about dead organs and about like you know when someone dies obviously you're transferring their organ their organ's still viable but it's dead it's not really working anymore yeah they have to kind of restart and get it kicked back into a new system yeah well I'm talking about taking a corpse that's been dead deteriorated for like a year and taking that organ 
and then stealing that and putting that in somebody's body. That can't fucking work. You're sitting there like, <gasps> I, I don't know, my kidney does not feel any better, man. I still feel like I'm dying. Be like, all right, you'll be fine. A couple months later, that person dies. Because their they're like, kidney's just like, sorry. <laughs> so to conceal their practices, BTS employees forged a variety of the necessary certificates and even as in one case of an exhumed Queen's woman's replaced bone with PVC piping to fool family members of the deceased. Of the numerous companies who purchased illegally obtained body parts or tissue, none had ever contacted the family member listed on the deceased consent forms to verify the consent, or even that the cons uh, consenting person listed actually existed. The BTS scandal became international news after it was determined that the remains of the deceased broadcaster Alistair Cook were among those that had been violated and sold in New York. The Cook case was featured on a 2008 episode of Horizon, How Much Is Your Dead Body Worth? People that do this and sell them on black market are known as um, ground level wranglers and get as much as $10,000 going into hospitals and mort mortuaries. <sighs> the pr it's definitely depressing, but you got to yeah. think like this is an well, issue I never even knew about. Like, I heard, we thought that biomedical tissue services was the people that helped out firefighters and gave them new skin. Imagine if that skin's coming from your dead grandma who didn't consent to have all her skin taken away. Well, that's the thing. Like, I, you, it's easy to relate to people who are like, like, yeah, they're, they're just like squeamish. When they're alive, they didn't want to think about like where their dead bodies were going. But like, when they're dead, they don't care about them. And their heart can save a innocent teenage girl's life you know well what comes to your mind when we think of what happens after you die you believe your organs should still be in there you know the the egyptians believed in mummifying the bodies and keeping them preserved and keeping the organs intact i think you know it'd be a weird way of thinking of the afterlife is if your body becomes your vessel like that when it dies it becomes your vessel when you go up into whatever place you're going to our spiritual world so like when you're a ghost or something if you become a ghost you have like as your body deteriorates on earth your ghost starts to deteriorate in that form so sooner or later your eye starts popping out and you start getting like worms that's what scares me is because if your body is going to be used in the next life too like the afterlife imagine people that get cremated they're just a pile of ash like they can that, feel themselves a, burning in the other world like that just always freaked me out that'd be a cruel design imagine someone taking out your kidneys and you're a ghost like hey that's mine I don't need it right now, but still. Imagine like a like an autistic person, you know. Like. What? When they pass into the afterlife, they they don't get any release. You How know. How easy would it be to just take an autistic kid's kidney rather than a normal kid's kidney? They probably see that as easy pickings. <sighs> I don't know, man. It's crazy to think about, but it's it's out there. Well, in February two thousand six. Uh, six, Michael Mastromino, then a 42-year-old, former New Jersey-based oral surgeon and CEO and executive director of operations of BTS, was convicted along with three employees of wrongdoing and sentenced to prison terms. Wrongdoing. <laughs> Stealing tissues and stuff. Wrongdoing. Not it boxing tissues. Wrong. Human tissues. Mastromino and Lee Crusetta, one of the convicted employees, agreed to a deal that resulted in their imprisonment. Mastromino was sentenced on J June 27, 2008 in the Supreme Court in Brooklyn, New York, to between 18 and 54 years in prison. Director Toby Dye made the documentary Body Snatcher of New York about this case in 2010. On September 4, 2008, defense attorneys for human graft tissue distributors asked U.S. District Judge William J. Martini to dismiss hundreds of charges asserting that the companies never knew the body parts were illegally obtained, and they say there is no evidence the transplanted tissue made anyone ill. You gotta think, though, you're doing all these types of body transfers. How much of it is 100% like healthy? Like, how much of it is 100% clean organs? You're definitely, there's someone that's got some disease out there. I know, I forget exactly that's who why it when, was. That's why when you get an organ transfer, they test you. Like, they watch you. They put you under, like, a, a watch for a certain amount of time. Like, you you, you got to keep constant updates, doctor's appointments to make sure that the organ's not infecting you in some certain way. I believe it was the actor who played the Predator in Predator. He got into a, I believe it was a motorcycle crash. And he received a blood transplant, and from that, he received the AIDS virus. It's 
We're, we no saved. fault of his own. Just fucking. It's crazy thinking. How it do you convince sometimes. somebody you got AIDS from a blood transfusion, not from the other way? That's it's it's nuts. On September fourth, two thousand eight, defense attorneys, uh, like I said, they said that there's no evidence that the transplant tissue made anyone ill. Well, according to the actual FDA, all tissue products collected and distributed by BTS were recalled and will be monitored for a complete accounting of all graft material. BTS sold its product products to five companies. Two of the companies were LifeCell Corporation of New Jersey and Regeneration Technologies of Florida. Overall, about 10,000 patients in the United States and Canada received graft tissues from BTS. Companies looked at the dead with dollar signs, no longer as a being. This happened in Florida and New Jersey. This is happening all over. Like, it's not, like, not stupid to think that it's happening at our own hospitals. I don't know. I, I have a very... Uh, the, the utilitarian blood in me r- really gets inflamed with the idea that, like... People are taking advantage. Well, no, the, the, the people are not giving up their vessels, in a sense... Really? For, for the people who are alive, you know? Like, pe- people who are squeamish, like, no, I, I don't want you to... I don't want this... I think the whole aspect is once you die and you don't have any power of over where your organs go, you want to donate them to someone that's going to need them. Like, if a little girl needs my heart exactly. or something, you that, know, and I, don't, I can't use that's it anymore, why, then uh, donate it. But think about it. How do they know if it's going to actually go to that little girl? That's well, their whole idea. A little girl is, isn't... Like, it could go to, like, a 50-year-old man. Like, that give Doesn't matter. It, How do you know? As long, if, as long as it goes to a normal life, yeah, that's fine. And even even if it just goes to, like, research, like, that, that's also a very effective use, you know? But if you have someone that's near you that needs your organ and you're transferring it over to them, like a friend or something, then you die on the operating table... Then they say, sorry, that we didn't, we couldn't get the organ out. And then they send that organ somewhere else. And then your friend's still dying. How do they know it was going to be put to good use? It's all about how do you know your stuff's going to be put to good use? I think you just have to trust the... you got to trust people. You, and have, to, people you have to trust doctors. You can't trust anybody. You can't trust anybody but yourself when it comes to stuff like this. this they're is, just super... Like, I can definitely trust the medical system to, to get my... To get my organs where they need to be. Depends on if, so, if someone needs my liver or my heart, I trust that they'll get get it to the person on the highest, the, the highest on the priority list. It de- it depends on, like I said, the moral op- opportunity of the person. Some people are good out there, and some people are bad out there. Some doctors would rather take the extra ten thousand dollars they're being offered to send that organ somewhere else than to go put it in a normal surgery and save someone's life. Then you have good people out there that would do the right thing. But you never know, man. It's all about the basis of where you're at. You know, there could be different hospitals, different doctors. Your doctor could be on vacation that week, and you got a whole other asshole as dealing with, you know. Well, you see, money problems at home. That said, you know these these this company was looking at corpses as dollar signs, you know. But like, like like you also said like earlier, like that those skin grafts went to ten thousand people. I just saved ten thousand lives, you know. Or infected ten thousand people. Or but. You would think those tissues. You would you would think that if those tissues were infected, that there would be evidence, you know. And if they weren't, then that's what the director said. There's no evidence. The director of the company that was running it, yeah. of course, he's going to say there's no evidence. Maybe they burned it. But the whole aspect is he's going to all these funeral homes and taking people's skin and then selling it to other people, and it's been given to ten thousand people. Yeah. Well, you'd think if those ten thousand people were infected with dead skin. You know, maybe not all of them, but you got to think there's at least one or two out there. Maybe, you know, they're not doing it in the way a hospital would do it. They're yeah. doing it like, hey, let me get this dead person's skin. You know, they're going to a funeral homes and doing that. You know, your grandma doesn't have any skin now because <laughs> you have nothing to look at in the coffin because someone took her skin and is using it somewhere else. You'd be comfortable with that, not being able to look at your grandma one last time before. Maybe if they, it'd be better reasoning if they, when they're about to put her in the ground to do all this stuff, because then you don't have to look at the body again once it's covered up in dirt. But the whole idea of corpse stealing and body snatching has been around for years. People, there used to be a corpse gun that would protect the coffin from um, intruders, like grave robbers and stuff, because 
people are stealing people's families out of their graves. Actually, people would dig up their family members back in the day and take their family members home because they wanted their body where they could see it, where they could see it safe. They would let it sit in their living room because, you know, people were just breaking the bottoms of coffins and dragging the body out. And they made corpse cages. This was big in the Victorian era. Isn't that, that's just ridiculous to think. So, I mean, this isn't... Work. Especially back in that time, they, they definitely had a more, like, like spiritual view on their, like, bodies. I don't want anybody like stealing my family members either, man. I'd be upset too. I probably would try to take my grandma home. Yeah, man. It's, it's a really... It's hard not to get emotional about that kind of thing. It's, it's hard to know where your morality stands. I, I think at my core, I really believe that like everyone should be giving their corpse to the living. But it's really hard to tell that to someone who's just lost their family member. You know, it's it's hard to reconcile that like utilitarian like someone can use your heart. We're going to take your heart. Well, BTS was not an accredited member, nor yeah. did the company ever apply to be a member of the American Association of Tissue Banks. So they were working kind of under the law. They weren't really yeah. doing it the viable um, identification way. Like if you were going to drive without a license. Yeah. So Robert Rigney, who heads the association, says he doubted anyone who received tissue donations originating from the company is in any kind of health danger because the processors of the company dealt with had been subjected the tissues to their own screening processes. However, transplant patient Betty Boff was one person who suffered severe infection from septic shock, underwent dialysis, and ultimately paralysis due to having received an implant made from infected cadaver tissue from Master Muno's company. Oh, so we yeah. talked about out of that 10,000 people that got tested. There it is. There it is. So imagine a woman now is completely paralyzed because she just got received a bad implant. The, the wrong one, man. Although a recent judicial ruling has increased the difficulty of patients improving pain and suffering from receiving bad donor tissue in cases like these, Pfaff's lawsuit is still pending. Since 2005, it's still pending. Damn. So, actually this is from 2008, so 2008 is still pending. Other patients who received BTS-derived tissue and body parts include a Colorado woman who had to repeat her ACL replacement surgery after her first BTS tendon failed, and an Ohio woman who developed syphilis after receiving a bone from BTS, and an Ohio man who developed both HIV and hepatitis C after receiving Ugh. BTS bone implants in surgery. My God. Am I changing your aspect in that 10,000 people? Well, yeah, see, I, I was never like... They should be doing that illegally. But oh yeah, like, for sure. But I mean, like, I understand where you were going with, yeah, with the whole like, idea of how obviously, it might yeah, else. they're bad for doing it under the table. But I definitely with think illegal I methods. Think they were going especially because we were talking like before, like like I was kind of sounding like yeah, they, their screening process was like yep, like there wasn't any evidence, you know. But now you write out the evidence, you well, know. They were going after the basis of those people that already tested this stuff, so they're taking the other person's word. I think they should have made their own tests also. Yeah. But that was just a waste of time. They wanted to sell these stuff as fast as possible. On January 8, 2010, Michael Mastrino's now ex-wife, Barbara Mastromino, appeared on the Oprah Winfrey Show in a segment, Husband's Secret Lives, and discussed the effect of the actions on her life and their son's lives. After confronting his father about the reason for his crimes while Dr. Mastromino was incarcerated at Rikers Island, their older son subsequently refused to speak to his father. During the broadcast, Barbara Mastromino also listened to and apologized to the daughter of a victim of her husband's crimes, while mentioning she had no knowledge of her husband's illegal acts. Barbara Mastromino acknowledged ignoring warning signs about the character of her ex-husband early in their relationship. On the morning of July 7, 2013, Michael Mastromino died at St. Luke's Hospital after suffering from bone cancer. He was only age 49. So the head of that program died of bone cancer. Do you say good riddance to a man that was selling organs and doing all this stuff? Or you say, you know, it seemed like that was karma in a way. Because karma, you know, he's infecting all these people with bad tissues and stealing people's organs and he gets killed by a bone disease. I find it hard to say good riddance to any human life. You know, it's... It's, 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 it's never... It's never good to like presume, you know. So, so wrapping up the whole topic, it's, it's, of we, the we we talked about this. Issues. We talked about this again and again, you know. The do people deserve to be given a second chance? You know, those 
World War II scientists, you know? All the fucked up shit they did. Do they deserve another shot, you know? They were following orders, you know? It's an excuse, but, like, it's it's human nature. Do you think your thought changed on when I say biomedical tissue services now? <laughs> yeah. You don't think of people that are helping out uh, victims of burning incidents? Well, not this specific company, but what that name implies, I still believe in that, you know? Help Helping... Like, like well, no. the, the this true. Is, this, isn't, this isn't chalking up to skin grafts and everything like that. This isn't chalking up the idea of skin grafts. This There's, specific company. This yeah. company is known as the Biomedical Tissue Services. Yeah. So this is what they were doing. Yeah. So the whole idea of Biomedical Tissue Services, where we said it was a company that was helping with, you know, specifically BTS. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definite opinion change there. BTS is BS. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody out there looking to find out this a little bit more about this topic, definitely research it up. Um, look up some actual cases because body snatching and you know, organ harvesting is actually a giant thing that's happened through history, and it um, doesn't seem like it's stopping now and might not stop anytime soon. And also maybe consider looking up how to become a legitimate organ donor, you know, actually save someone's life. Yeah, look up the benefits of adding that onto your license, you know, maybe your organs will be used to good and actually help somebody out. It's nice to think that, you know, we can still provide comfort to someone that needs it or a life, a new life to someone that uh, still has plenty of years left to live. So thanks for listening to this episode of Fill in the Blank and stay tuned for the next episode. For the next-